Hello friends, we're back in the kitchen for a little behind the scenes. So this one's going to be all about the spectrometer that I made for the James Webb spectrometry video. So you might want to go and watch that first, but I'm not here to tell you how to live your lives, so you do you. So to make a spectrometer, you will need a laptop, a shard of a DVD, which unsurprisingly comes from a DVD. I'll show you how to get that in a bit. A cardboard box, here's a cardboard box, a webcam, a bit of card with a slit in it, and a light source. Yes, oh, and a cable, one of these two. So in order to analyse the spectrum of a particular light source, you want to isolate that light source. So you just want to be able to pick up that one light source. So to do that, you want to make a dark environment that you can shine your light source into and then pick up just that light. So the ideal dark environment is a cardboard box. You need to make your cardboard box in such a way that the light can go through a very thin hole to enter into the dark space. So this is unsurprisingly an Amazon box because my life is on Amazon these days, filling the pockets of Jeff Bezos. So what I did is I cut a big hole in the cardboard box and then I covered it with card, thinner card that was easier to cut and cut a smaller hole in that card. So when it's all sealed up, you can see, and it's all taped up, you can see that the only way for light to get in is through this thin slit. Now the thin slit is also helpful because it creates a kind of laser, essentially. You've got a very thin beam of light that your DVD piece can then split up into a nice neat spectrum. So that's what I did. You can do it in a VHS box. If you still have VHSs, you can make your own box with a slit. But essentially, that's the basics. You want light to come in a tiny thin hole and move along here. So the next part is your diffraction grating. So a spectrum is created when light is split up into its different colours. Now, you can either do that with a prism, that's how it was originally done by Newton and, um, what's his name? Thingamy, Fraunhofer and Wollaston. Yep, but these days, actually these things, DVDs, are much easier to come by. They come with a printed side where you can write mixtape that is fire on it, um, and they come with a reflective shiny side. Now, what I've done is taken a DVD, made a cut across it, made a little pie out of it. And then what you want to do is very carefully peel the two bits of DVD away. And this, you don't need. And you want to keep this bit that you can kind of see through. You can kind of see through it. And um, this is, this DVD contains a diffraction grating. Now what that means is it's got its very, very tiny lines that each act as a kind of prism to split up the light. And you know, you can see it's doing that because even as it reflects it, you can see the kind of rainbow that it's creating. So when light passes through here at an angle, not straight on, when light passes through straight on, you can kind of see, uh, but when it goes through at an angle, it's going to break it up into a prism. So you want to get a thin piece like this. You could use a bigger piece, but it's going to be hard to fit in your box. So a thin piece like this is what's going to go right over the camera lens and it's going to break up the light. Now, the web camera lens, uh, my poor long-suffering husband has had to make do without his webcam. You can use any kind of webcam for this, but um, ideally not one that's attached to your computer because then you'd have to put your whole computer in a box, which I think is impractical. So any plug-in webcam will do. Uh, and then what you wanna do is fix your shard of DVD right across the front like that. And here is one I made earlier. Ta -da! So there's your shard of DVD with a nice bit of fingerprints. Shard of DVD taped across the front of the webcam lens. So this needs to now be mounted inside our box. Not too hard, we just put it inside the box. Now this is where a little bit of forward planning is needed with your slit, because you need to know where the beam of light is gonna go and where your webcam is gonna go. Now, I didn't make my slit in a particularly good place because my webcam is wedged right up in this corner. So that's probably something better that you could do. 
So if you move the slit over here, the webcam can sit in the middle of the box. It makes very little difference. Anyway, you want to put this in so that the beam of light coming through the slit is hitting the lens, hitting the shard of DVD and the lens at an angle. So about a 45 degree angle. It doesn't have to be perfect and that's definitely something you can play with once you are in, once it's all sealed up and you can see the spectrum on your computer. So you've got your beam of light coming through and it is hitting your webcam right there. Uh, so the next thing to do is to connect it all up to the computer. So we've got a USB-C cable here. Let's get rid of that. We've got a computer. We will get this computer up and running. So then you get your spectrometer plugged in and you want to go to a website like spectralworkbench.com which allows you to analyze the spectrum coming through your homemade spectrometer or, you know, an actual purchased USB spectrometer uh, just as if you were Fraunhofer himself. Now, mm -mm -mm. Ta-da! Okay, once you actually get your like, webcam connected, you will get something like this. And so, at this point, you are ready to close up your spectrometer. And because I chose a really complicated box, that's not easy to do. And you can see here that it's gone dark, which is good. That's what we want, because we only want our slit of light to be coming through. That'll be okay like that. So it's dark inside the box, unsurprisingly. Next thing, your light source. For that, I'm gonna use my cat toy. My cat's toy, sometimes sometimes a laser. Why are you so small? Oh yeah, because you're close. And sometimes a torch. So at this point, you wanna get your torch to shine in through the slit. I'm gonna come around there. What you want is Oh, you can't even see. Let's fix this. Right. So here we are, looking at the spectrometer. Da, 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 da. And you want to shine your torch at the slit so that your light goes through the hole and produces a nice, tidy little spectrum. So, hello. You've got the torch just out of shot pointing at the beam and you want to get the angle just right. This is where a little bit of fiddling is needed. <clears throat> I had it, no, I haven't got it. Just, what have you done? Maybe quite a lot of fiddling is needed. There we go. And if you get it really bright, the uh, software will shout at you that the light source is too bright, but for these purposes, it doesn't really matter. So what you've got on the screen here is a very nice spectrum. That's what your camera is seeing through the DVD diffraction grating. Uh, and that corresponds to the spectrum of this particular light source. Now, what's quite interesting is if I use my cat toy, not the mouse bit. There, that's quite cute, isn't it? The star. No, but we just want the laser. Now, this will be a bit tricky. But there you go. It's getting a little bit of the reflected light. And because of some bouncing around inside, let's just do it like that. It's got a little bit of the reflected laser light. You can see that it's just a single point of red and that's the point of lasers. It's a single wavelength of light or a very narrow band of light. So that's it. Um, there's not much more to it. Uh, so depending on the size of your light source and how easy it is to point down your slit. You might need a little stand. As you can see, I'm using engineering mathematics, the best. And you can do different things like this. So you can begin capturing on here. And that will show you your very narrow band for a laser. Or you, this is a UV light for UV light purposes, which is not quite as bright, but we can see that this one 
is much closer down the blue and into the ultraviolet. I don't know if it is actually an ultraviolet. And, uh, and then your normal light source, which is your torch, this one here, once you get that, has got a full spectrum of white light. Uh, plus a little bit of reflected blue because I didn't stick the DVD on properly. So yeah, so um, this is your homemade spectrometer. I personally very much enjoyed uh, running around the house trying to find loads of different light sources and seeing what how their spectra would be different. It's quite fun to put a candle in front or see what you can find. So I hope that was fun and informative and I will see you next time. Bye bye. Ooh.